How do you know God was a healer if you didn't need healing? How do you know God is a deliverer if you never needed deliverance? Amen. How we know these things is because we've been met with those challenges in our life, but God delivered us from them. That's how we know he's God. the house of God. Amen. And we thank God for all of you being here with us. Amen. 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 Now I know that, amen, we are getting started. Amen. And we're going to jump right into, I see we already gave offering earlier. Amen. So amen. We thank God for those who gave and those who had nothing to give. Truly your presence means more to us than what's in your wallet. Amen. But amen. We got a little reading to do today. And I would like to come from Amen. First Kings, the thirteenth chapter. First Kings, the thirteenth chapter. Amen. And we're going to uh, we're going to come from we're gonna begin at verse one. And we'll do we'll do a little hopping, not too much, but we are going to do some reading, Amen. But First Kings, the thirteenth chapter, and we're going to begin at verse one. That is in the Old Testament. It's right before Second Kings, if that helps. <laughs> amen. Yep. Amen. First Kings, the thirteenth chapter. <clears throat> And it reads, And behold, there came a man of God out of Judah by the word of the Lord unto Bethel, and Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. And he cried against the altar and the word of the Lord and said, O altar, altar, thus saith the Lord, Behold, a child shall be born unto the house of David, Josiah by name, and upon thee shall he offer the priests of the high places that burn incense upon thee, and men's bones shall be burnt upon thee. And he gave a sign the same day, saying, This is the sign which the Lord hath spoken. Behold, the altar shall be rent, and the ashes that are upon it shall be poured out. And it came to pass, when King Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of God, which had cried against the altar in Bethel, that he put forth his hand from the altar, saying, Lay hold on him, and his hand, which he put forth against him, dried up, so that he could not pull it in again to him. The altar also was rent, and the ashes poured out from the altar, according to the sign which the man of God had given by the word of the Lord. And the king answered and said unto the man of God, Entreat now the face of the Lord thy God, and pray for me, that my hand may be restored me again. And the man of God besought the Lord, and the king's hand was restored him again, and became as it was before. And the king said unto the man of God, Come home with me, and refresh thyself, and I will give thee a reward. And the man of God said unto the king, If thou wilt give me half thine house, I will not go in with thee, neither will I eat bread nor drink water in this place. 
For so was it charged me by the word of the Lord, saying, Eat no bread, nor drink water, nor turn again by the same way that thou camest. So he returned, so he went another way, and returned not by the way that he came to Bethel. Now there dwelt an old prophet in Bethel, and his sons came and told him all the works that the man of God had done that day in Bethel, the words which he had spoken unto the king. Them they told also in their, to their father. And their father said unto them, What way went he? For his sons had seen what way the man of God went, which came from Judah. And he said unto his son, Saddle me the ass. So they saddled him the ass, and he rode thereon, and went after the man of God, and found him sitting under an oak tree. And he said unto him, Art thou the man of God that camest from Judah? And he said, I am. Then he said unto him, Come home with me, and eat bread. And he said, I may not return with thee, nor go in with thee, neither will I eat bread nor drink water with thee in this place. For it was said to me by the word of the Lord, thou shalt eat no bread nor drink water there, nor turn again to go by the way that thou camest. He said unto him, I am a prophet also, as thou art. And an angel spoke unto me by the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back with thee into thine house, that he may eat bread and drink water. But he lied unto him. So he went back with him and did eat bread in his house and drank water. Now let's drop down to the 23rd verse. The 23rd verse. And it came to pass after he had eaten bread and after he had drunken that he saddled for him the ass to wit for the prophet whom he had brought back. And when he was gone, a lion met him by the way and slew him. And his carcass was cast in the way, and the ass stood by it. The lion also stood by the carcass. And we would like to speak from this thought this morning. If you would please look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. If you're watching us online, look at your cat dog and say, neighbor. Whatever you do, don't go back. Don't turn, back. Don't turn back. Amen. And that's the thought we would like to speak from this morning. Don't turn back. <clears throat> Amen. This weekend, I kind of was sitting back and reflecting. And I remember my grandma Growing up in that household was with my grandma, my mom, and my aunt before my mom had got married. And my grandma, she watched all the old shows, you know, all the old school stuff, the Nick at Night stuff from I Dream a Genie, Mannix, <laughs> In the Heat of the Night, <laughs> amen, all those old shows, <laughs> Kojak. But there was one show in particular that I liked. I liked Wild Wild West, right? But I also liked Bewitched. And she used to twinkle her nose. Now, when you think of the premise of that particular sitcom or show, it lasted eight seasons. And the premise was uh, Darren, the husband, he had married her. But he didn't know that she belonged to a fraternity of witches. And so the thing was is that when he got with her, he said, if we're going to be together, you can't use your powers. And that's what she did. She tried her best to live a normal life, but you know her mother really didn't like him, and the family was just crazy. It was weird. It was a bunch of witches. And uh, she tried her best not to use her powers, but she always had to use her powers to make things right that were out of whack. She always had to use them to restore things. And the thing about it was is that Darren, most of the time, he was oblivious to what really happened because they were using magic. Amen? And oftentimes, he himself was put under a spell. And 
at the end of the day, as I thought about that, it made me think about a story, right? There was a story about a priest who had a goat. If you don't mind, I'll tell you about this priest and this goat because you know I like a good story. And there was this priest, and he was a simple man. He was humble, and he was rewarded with a goat. He loved that goat, cared for the goat, you know, put it up on his back, and he was rolling with his goat. Now, there were those who looked upon this priest and seen his goat, and there were three of them. They were three criminals, pretty much. They were three cheats, and they were going to cheat that man out of his goat because they wanted something to eat. So even though the priest, he liked his goat and it was a pet to him, others looked at it as a meal. And so we see that these uh, three cheats, they devised a plan to try to get the man's goat. So what they did is after they hashed out their plan, they sat in three different areas along the priest's path. So as he's walking on his way, gingerly happy with his goat, he runs into the first cheat, and the first cheat looks at him and said, hey, man, what's that dog on your back? And, you know, the priest was like, man, what are you talking about? Obviously, it's a goat that's on my back. You saw wrong. What are you talking about? I'm acting stupid, weird, right? And so he kept on walking, right? And the the first cheat said, my bad, man, That's that's just what I saw when I see. You know, I'm just telling you what I saw. And, you know, the priest, he discards it. He keeps going. And then he runs into the second cheat. And the second cheat says, hey, man, what you doing with that dead calf on your back? And he's like, man, what are you talking about? This is a goat. The last guy, he's thinking about it. Like, what are you talking about? He said, man, hey, don't judge me. That's just what I see. That's all I see is a dead calf on your back. And he's weird. Like, you weird, man. So he keeps on going. He's thinking about these encounters. Then he reaches the third cheat. The third guy says, hey, man, what you doing with that monkey on your back? And he's like, man, what are you talking about? And then he started thinking about it. And then he started getting conscious of it. And, he, and the thing that brought him joy, the goat that was supposed to be this pet, this great thing, he starts looking at it like, do I have a ghost on my back? What is it? Because one guy saw, he, he, he saw a, a monkey. One guy saw a dead calf. And then another guy saw something else. Man, this is crazy. So he, he looks at the goat and he throws it away from him. And then he runs. And then the cheat, you know, he's smiling and laughing, and they go grab his goat, and then they go have lunch. And the thing about it is, is we have to be careful not to allow people to cheat us out of the good thing that we have. No matter what they call it, you got to know what it is. You got to know what you have in God, and you can't allow yourself to become bewitched. Uh, Tell somebody, don't turn back. No matter what the world says, you can't turn back from what you know about God. It was Albert Einstein who said, Great spirits have always encountered violent opposition from mediocre minds. And what he meant by that is we have, there are those who have great minds, but they allow their minds to be suppressed by mediocrity. Amen. You can have these great thoughts, but if you center around people who are mediocre, who don't see like you, they will suppress you from becoming everything that you can be. And oftentimes, amen, we have family and we've got people in our lives that look to suppress our spiritual move of God. And if we're not careful and we listen to them, what they'll do is they'll gaslight us. Now, gaslighting is a term for psychological abuse, and it was coined in 1938 by a playwright named uh, Patrick Hamilton. He, he created the term more or less gaslighting. And in this play, we see the husband of a man or a man who had a wife who basically told his wife little things that weren't true to cause her or drive her insane. He basically was saying things and he was trying to get her to see things and go crazy so he could go do his thing. 
And we got to be careful with what we allow into our minds and what we allow into our space. Because if you're not careful, people will tell you you're crazy when you're perfectly sane. But it's really the enemy who's trying to creep into your mind and control it. So you got to be careful with what you listen to and what you take in. Amen. Glory be to God. And see, that's the thing. This this world, amen, saints of God and friends, uh, 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 this world will tell you that God is wrong. It'll tell you you'll need more than God if you're going to make it. It will gaslight you to the point to where it will cripple your mind spiritually. It will cripple your heart from hearing God as you should. And it'll cause you to go insane. Yeah. And see, the thing about insanity, it was coined. Now, there were a lot of people who said Albert Einstein said insanity is doing the same thing and expecting different results, but it really wasn't Albert Einstein who said that. They don't know who said it, but we've all heard that quote before. And oftentimes, we allow this world to gaslight us into doing the same thing constantly over and over, but yet we expect something different to happen in our lives. Uh, but tell somebody, don't you turn back. Uh, you ain't going to drive me crazy. I know what I know about God, and I'm standing on it. Amen. You can call me what you want to call me, but I got to stand on the truth of God's word. Amen. Now, see, we kind of see that happening, amen, in 1 Kings chapter 13, amen, where we are introduced to a prophet, amen. This was a man of God, the Bible declares unto us, and he came, amen, from a Judah. And he came to pronounce judgment on King Jeroboam. Now, we dealt a little bit with King Jeroboam in Sunday school this morning. We understand that, amen, in order for him to control Israel and him to be king, he had to divert them away from God and get them to serve idols. That's exactly what he did. He set up idols and he tried to get them away from seeing the true God so he could control them. And there's some people who are trying to divert us away from God so that they can control us. Most of the time when you look at the uh, the pathology of uh, an abuser, what he does is he sweeps up the young woman off her feet and slowly he pulls her away from her family and everybody else. Now the Bible declares unto us that a house divided can't stand. And what he does is he tries to divide us from our strength. He tries to divide us from our footing. He tries to divide us from our foundation so that he can cripple us and draw us out so he can eat us. Just like those three cheats uh, when you deal with the priest and his goat. Now, when we look at the word of God here, we see that this man of God, he came to speak a word from God. He was a man of God. He heard the word of God. He had the message of God, and he went to do what God called him to do. I want you to see that clearly, amen, in First Kings uh chapter uh, 13 and verse 1. Now, now we see this man of God, he goes and he speaks against the altar because that's what Jeroboam did. He established idolatrous worship. And even though, even though the man of God spoke out against the altar, he was really speaking out against Jeroboam because Jeroboam had tried to put everything into twisting the altar. But he was letting Jeroboam know that no matter how much you try to twist it up, it affects that's why we can't worry about lies and that's why you can't get frustrated when folks lie on you because a lie can't stand it will eventually fall it will eventually collapse so you won't have anything to worry about we just got to keep walking in the word of God but we see now that Jeroboam he sees the man of God and he pronounces judgment on the altar and Jeroboam sees him and he says, hold up. And he sticks out his hand and he tells his, uh, his, uh, his men, to, hey, hey, grab this man before he says another word. But as he sticks out his hand, his hand shrivels up and he gets stiff and he's sitting over there he was pointing but now he's all twisted up like this and now he's looking crazy because he knows it's God see the thing about 
got it when you operate in the power of God. Like I said last week, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. It don't matter who said go get them. Amen. God going to twist that thing up to where they won't be able to finish their sentence. But when you operate in the word of God, God will stand for you. And so we see this prophet. We see the power of God rest on him because God fought for him. And Jeroboam, his arm is twisted up and that he was talking crazy, but now he's talking good. And he's saying, look here, Mr. Prophet, amen, I, I need you to pray for me right now. You know, it's funny how the folks who talk crazy to you be the first folks that want to come and ask for some prayer. Be the first folks, they was talking crazy last week, but this week they need $20. Hey, 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 hey I'm sorry about all that, but I need 20 And so what we see now, amen, is that... The king, he's talking sweet. If you could please go to God. That showed me that he knew what he was doing. Jeroboam was wicked. He wasn't deceived. He was being wicked. And there's some folks uh, who will try to talk all this other stuff, but really they just ain't right. Uh, because when it boils down to it and they get in a situation they can't come out of, the first person they call on is Jesus. Uh, they want to act like they don't know him throughout the week, but let something happen. Uh, let them get sick. Let COVID-19 hit that body. Uh, let, uh, let, some, let mama die. They call in fast. Hey, somebody pray for me. Oh, glory be to God. Uh, that's why we can't listen to people and we can't be swayed by what the world says. But world says, but you got to stand on the word of God for yourself. Uh, uh, but we see King Jeroboam, he sweet talks to the prophet and he asks him, if you would please pray for me that my arm gets better and the man of God prays for him. Amen. See, the thing about it is, is that we are servants of God. Even though the person who was looking to inflict pain on me, if I got the spirit of God resting on me, I should be able to pray for them. I got another spirit if I'm acting like, no, and I want to act like I can house the power of God. But when you operate in the power of God, you got to operate in the law of God. Amen. So if they slap me in in the face I turn the other cheek amen if they take me one mile I got to go the extra mile but if I walk in the power of God it'll be the power of God to keep me I can't condemn you when I know God had to help me out ain't no sense in me talking about you when I know it took the power of God to bring me out of my delusion so we got to show forth the love of God amen I know we talk about killing and crippling and shutting down our enemies but the same David who said kill him was the same David that said Lord forgive me and we can't ever forget that we need the forgiveness of God every day in our life oh, somebody shout glory glory be to God but we see now amen uh, that the prophet he prays for him his hand gets normal and you know the king he's back to his old schemes and he tries to invite uh, the prophet home he says come home with me you know what I'm saying come come with me I'll give you a reward thank you for healing me uh, but the prophet says no even if you gave me half your kingdom I wouldn't go to your house because God told me the way that I can I shouldn't go back but I got to go another way I can't go back and sit with you and see it would do uh, wise for us to realize that even though people get healed it doesn't necessarily mean that they're sincere there's a lot of people who got uh, healed or got out of a situation only to run back into it because they're still deceived within themselves there's still a self deception and we have to be careful because because sometimes we'll lift up people who shouldn't be lifted up only because they got a little something are they on your side but let somebody else do something for them and they're right back to their old schemes that's why we got to stand with God and not stand just with people be careful who you co-sign and who you drop a dime on I love you and everything but I ain't foolish just like the man who picked up a snake it was cold outside cold very cold and the snake was cold shivering 
And the man came across the snake. He picks up the snake and he says, I, I'll warm you up, but just don't bite me. And the snake said, okay, I won't bite you. So he put him in his, his bag and as he's walking along and the snake warms up and gets free. And then the man says, ouch, he feels a sharp pain in his side. He looks in the bag and he's seen that the snake had bit him. And he said, man, I, you said that you wouldn't bite me if I warmed you up. But the snake said, hey, you knew what I was when you picked me up. Hey, it's in my nature to bite. Amen. So the thing about it is, is we can never get it twisted. When you're dealing with the enemy, you're dealing with the enemy. I'll pray for you. Amen. I lift you up before God. But at the same time, I realize I'm not God. So I can't carry you. And sometimes you got to let God handle some folk. I'll pray for you. But I got to turn you over to the Lord. Uh, because I need God to help me uh, What I look like trying to box with the devil uh, Some of us out here trying to save the devil uh, And wondering why we getting slapped up in the face uh, You got to put the devil in his place uh, You got to say you stay over there uh, I'm going to be over here uh, But I'm putting you in God's hands uh, I'm in God's hands uh, So the best hands I can put you in uh, Is God's hands uh, Somebody shout glory Glory. Glory be to God. Uh, but we see now, amen, that uh, the young prophet says, no, I'm not going back because I can't go back because that's what God told me. I got to move on. So he goes another way. And the way he goes leads him by a tree. Now, uh, unbe un unbeknownst or unannounced to the prophet, there were some young men that were watching him. And these young men went back to their dad and told their dad who was an older prophet uh, amen it really doesn't give any description of him as well uh, but these young men tell their father everything that went down between the king and this prophet uh, and the old man said show me where this prophet is at amen so he saddles up on an ass and he rides out to this uh, the man of God he tracks him down and he finds him sitting under a tree yeah, he's doing what he's supposed to do but he's just chilling uh, and the Bible declares declares unto us that this prophet comes up to, amen, this young prophet, and he says, how you doing, amen, I heard you was, you know, the prophet from Judah, and he's like, yeah, that's me, and he says, now, Amen. I, I, I know you're a prophet and I want you to invite you into my home and I want you to sit down with me. And the young prophet said what he said to King Jeroboam when he invited him to his house. And the Bible declares unto us that the young prophet says, no, God told me not to turn back. Amen. As a matter of fact, he told me to go another way. And, and then the prophet, he gets clever. Amen. So now when we get into it around verse 18 of the 13th chapter, the Bible declares unto us that the prophet said, look, I'm a prophet too. Amen. See, I'm a prophet just like you. And an angel told me that you need to come with me. It's okay. I know what God told you, but God told me this. And see, the, the problem was, was that the young man listened to this old man. And the Bible lets us know it gave us a disclaimer and it said he was lying. And the thing about it is he listened to him. He gave in to him. And as a matter of fact, he went to his house. And as he was sitting down eating with this prophet, this prophet prophesied against him. And what did he say? He said, now, you know, you should have listened to God. You, you know what I'm saying? You ever see Minister Society and the cop is in the interrogation room and he says, you know you done messed up, right? And that's what the prophet did to him. He said, you know you done messed up, right? I, I, you, you, know, you know you shouldn't have came back. And now, amen, it's, it's going down. As a matter of fact, the lion is going to catch you in the street and slay you because you didn't listen to the word of the Lord. That had to be a hard meal to finish. Everything went from good to bad, to worse. And this young man, he finishes up eating his food. And then he saddles the ass that the prophet gave him. And as he rides out, he rides out and a lion comes out the way and eats him, tears him down. Now the lion didn't do anything to the donkey. It just ate the prophet that showed us that that was God. 
and the lion just stood there and the donkey just stood there. Amen. And people were walking by and they thought it was strange that, you know, lions, you don't really walk on their territory. But this lion was just standing here amidst the body of the prophet that didn't listen to the word of the Lord. And the donkey is just sitting there. And then people went back to the city where the old prophet was. And the old prophet, amen, when people were talking about, man, we seen something strange. It was just a lion and a donkey sitting right next to a dead man's body slain just out there in the wilderness. And the old prophet said, this is the man of God that disobeyed the word of the Lord. He didn't listen. And he's serving as an example for all those who don't hear or listen to the word of God or don't hold fast true to his words. Amen. God has given us a disclaimer. We got to follow him at all times. We can't get caught up in tricks. Uh, remember I told you one of my favorite shows was Bewitched. Uh, there's a lot of us who are getting caught up in the twinkle of the nose. Uh, we're getting caught up in sweet words. We're getting caught up to the point to where the enemy is deceiving us, to the point to where we disobey the word of the Lord. <laughs> Now, everything that I pointed out to you, I wanted to point out. Now, this man was a man of God. God fought for him. He had the word of God. He was walking in the truth. Uh, but for all those who may believe once saved, always saved. No, 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 no. You, you, you better stay walking with God. You better stay operating in his word. Uh, because you never know. That lion might come up. And see, the thing about it is, is we got to be careful not to step out of the protection of God. Now the Bible declares unto us that our adversary, the devil, is as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Amen. The prophet was okay when he was going forward. But when he turned back, that's when he got problems. Tell somebody, don't turn back. Oh, glory be to God. And, and I would like to take a minute just to look at, amen, glory be to God, those scriptures that we went over, amen, in verse, amen, chapter 13 and verses 18 and 19. Amen. Now, the prophet, when he approached the young prophet, he said, I am a prophet. Amen. And we got to be careful. Amen. When people come to us. Amen. We can't get caught up in names and in titles. We can't get caught up in who we think people are. Because come to find out people aren't always what they seem to be. Mm -hmm. They come in and they act one way. Uh, but when you get to know them, you'll find out a whole nother side to them. But he said, I am a prophet. It was the apostle Paul who said, oh, uh, amen, for such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Now, Paul said this to the Corinthians in church and we can't marvel sometimes we get caught up in the twinkle we get caught up in the glitter but we gotta not be ignorant of Satan's devices amen more now than ever we have to be in tune with God to know what he's trying to tell us in order for us to walk because sometimes as you walk and go forward the enemy will tell you you need to go this way. Uh, but that's when you got to know the word of the Lord for yourself. Uh, the prophet said, hey, 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 an angel told me. Now that, that befuddled me all the time because when I looked at the verse, the man of God had the word of God, which means God spoke to him directly. Amen. Now you're getting stuff secondhand from a man who got it from somebody secondhand. An angel ain't God. Amen. We got to be careful what we listen to. We getting stuff secondhand and we acting like it's the word of God. That's why you got to know the word of God for yourself. It was Paul when he spoke to the church at Galata. He said, oh foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you? Amen. From not obeying the truth. Who done fooled you? Who done hoodwinked you? Who done bamboozled you? 
Amen. It was Paul who also said to the Galatian church, I marvel how soon you are removed from the gospel. He said, if I come, if an angel come, if a prophet come and preach something else that I haven't preached unto you already, let him be accursed. And the thing about it is, is we got to be careful. We got to stand on the word of God. See, there's a whole lot of stuff going to and fro. Uh, the Bible declares unto us that perilous times would come. And these perilous times would bring the doctrines of devils. These perilous times would bring the rules and regulations of the enemy. And if you're not careful, just because they put on a suit and they flash some light and they know some scripture, you'll get sucked in from doing what God told you to do. Instead of doing, amen, you'll get sucked into doing what people want you to do instead of doing what God called you to do. See, the one thing that I do know is that most of the time, have you ever had your first mind to do something and then you didn't operate on your first mind and then everything ended up being messed up when you should have just went off your first mind but most of the time what happens is is that we tend to seek the approval of other people I'm looking for other people to confirm what God told me and most of the time that's what gives these prophets and these liars and these prognosticators power over us because, amen, we're looking for them to tell us something that we already got ourselves, And they suck us into the point to where we're eating out of their hand. Oh, glory be to God. But one thing that I ultimately want to look at is the word that the young prophet had. Amen. He told the king, amen, I'm not going to eat your meat. I'm not going to eat your dainties. Because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he, he knew Jeroboam but the problem is is when you are your brother or your sister whom you see every day they'll sit next to you they're not your enemy you don't know them like that but really they have malicious intent it was David who said it was my friends they sat with me but really the words were like fire amen that's what makes things difficult not only am I trying to decipher the word of God in my mind but I'm trying to figure out who's with me and who's against me. That's part of the battle. I'm, all, I'm constantly trying to figure it out. Oh, glory be to God. And that's part of the problem. I'm always trying to figure it out. Uh, but when God told me, he already told me two plus two equals four. But the problem is, is that I'm trying to still figure it out. Like I need to come up with it for it to be valid. If God gave it to you, you got to stand on it. And just like the young prophet said, I can't turn the way I came. But I got to go forward. And really what the young prophet was saying was he was speaking to Jeroboam. He was telling him, this is a turning point for you. Uh, but if you go back to your old ways, uh, there's stuff that's going to happen to you. Uh, but if you listen to the word of the Lord and change your ways, that's when you can move forward. Uh, but Jeroboam, he was too worried about control. A lot of us were too worried about control. We trying to control everything. Trying to control the bank account. Trying to control our kids. Trying to control our significant other. We're trying to control things. We have no control over. But when we should just humble ourselves and submit ourselves to God. When we should give him everything. We trying to work it out to the point to where we're entangled in the yoke of bondage ourself but God said you ain't got to figure it out you just got to trust me you just got to hear my word and you got to follow me to the end whatever you do don't look back uh, see God he told us some things he gave us the disclaimer it started with Eve in the garden mm -hmm. 
She wasn't even supposed to look at the fruit, but she allowed the enemy to gaslight her into thinking that that one tree was the one thing that she needed when really she had it all. Don't you allow the enemy to get you fixed on one thing because just like the rich young ruler, it was one thing that caused him to walk away from God. Don't you let one thing stop you from going forward in God. God, oh, but tell the devil, no, I'm not going to turn back. Oh, glory be to God. Oh, we see Cain and Abel. Abel gave a good sacrifice. Cain gave what he wanted to give. The Bible declares unto us that God came to Cain and told him that you need to repent. But Cain, he didn't want to repent. He was mad at his brother because his brother was successful. He was jealous of his relationship with God. And somehow he got it twisted by thinking somehow if he could kill his brother, that would make his sacrifice be better. But one thing that I've learned is that, amen, you tearing down your brother won't ever make your garbage look better to God. You got to get it together. You got to go forward. You got to repent. See, Cain, he didn't want to repent. He didn't want to let go, but he kept turning back. Tell somebody, don't turn back. Oh, glory be to God. The Bible declares unto us, uh, uh, God befriended Abraham, and Abraham, uh, he brought, amen, his nephew along with him, Lot. Uh, amen, Lot eventually went to Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, Abraham, uh, he had the land of Canaan. Uh, now, Sodom and Gomorrah, as we know, got real bad. Uh, it got crazy. Uh, South Central 1990s crazy. Uh, out of whack crazy. Uh, and when you had people who didn't even desire women. They were just trying to get men. And they would rape you if they could. Oh, glory be to God. It was crazy. Now we see that Lot, God had sent angels to deliver Lot and his family. Him, his wife, and his daughters told them to get out of Dodge. They were running for their life. Running towards the hills. But his wife stopped. Amen. And if I could just tell her, I would say, don't turn back. Uh, she looked back and turned into a pillar of salt. See, when you're running, you got to learn how to run for your life. It don't matter where the enemy is. It's where God is. And if I can just get to Jesus, if I can get to God, if I can get to that joy, if I can get to my peace, if I can get to my anointing, if I can get to God, that's all that matters. It's everything that's before you. It's not what's behind you. 2020 almost over. But I still got to go forward. They opening up buildings. But I got to go forward. I can't turn back. Because I can't go back. The only thing I can do is move forward and go. Tell somebody, don't turn back. Glory be to God. Oh, glory be to God. We see Lot and his wife. Oh, his wife falls and dies out. He turns back. Israel, they come out of bondage. They come out of Egypt. They come into the promised land. But they constantly turn back. They turn back to the point to where now we're at Jeroboam. The kingdom splits and eventually would fall prey to Nebuchadnezzar and his armies. They kept looking back. Jesus, he steps on the scene. Born in a manger. God manifested in flesh. Amen. God was standing before them. But they kept looking back. They had the law. They had God Almighty stand before them. But they were constantly looking back. I'm here to tell somebody, God's right before you. Why why are you looking back? God's in your midst. Why are you looking back? God's standing on your side. But why are you looking back? Oh, glory be to God. Tell somebody, don't turn 
Don't turn back. Oh, glory be to God. Jesus, through his teachings, he said in his word, he said, amen, if you'll be my disciple, Amen. He said he basically he was breaking down the terms of discipleship. And he said any man putting his hand to the plow and looking back is not fit for the kingdom. You can't go back. So why look back? But you got to keep moving forward. Jesus told his disciples, unless you pick up your cross and you follow me, you can't put it down. But you got to keep going. I know you're scared. But you got to keep going. I know you're hurt. But you got to keep going. I know you're struggling. But you got to keep going. I know your heart is heavy. But you got to keep going. Don't you stop. Don't you turn around. You know what God's done for you. You know the doors he's opened. You know how he's turned it around. Keep going forward. By any means necessary. I'm going forward. Don't turn back. <coughs> Glory be to God. <laughs> See now, amen, it was a prophet, or rather, amen, an apostle who said, looking unto Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith, amen, who saw the joy that was set before him, despised the shame, amen, and now sits at the right hand of power with God. See, we can learn a few things from Jesus. Oh, glory be to God. He went through the garden of Gethsemane. That was the psychological warfare. You're always going to go through a form of psychological warfare in your walk with God. Everything is going to tell you not to do what God has called you to do. And so most of the time, we have to labor. But we don't have to labor in worry. We don't have to labor in anxiety. But he said labor in prayer. No matter how long it takes, his disciples weren't with him. He was all by himself. As a matter of fact, the Bible declares that the disciples had fell asleep. But even if folks sleep on you, you still got to get to God. When don't nobody pick up the phone, I still got to call on Jesus. Oh, when folks don't invite me out, I still got to walk with Jesus. Even when they talk about me, I still got to walk with Jesus. But whatever I do, I can't turn back. Everything's before me. So we see the psychological pressure and the pain and the agony you go through. Then there's the physical pain. Jesus being whipped all night, being mocked, amen, being pushed around by people he knew he could evaporate at any moment in time. You got to be humble. Amen. You're going to go through some things. Folks are going to hurt you. They're going to beat you. They're going to misuse you. They're going to treat you bad. But when you got purpose on your mind, when you know this is not unto death, but this is for the glory of God, uh, just like Jesus, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. Uh, so if I keep my eyes on him, I got truth. I got the way, I got life, even though it don't feel like it, even when I'm bruised and afflicted, I still got to walk with Jesus, I got to see that cross sitting before me, this is what I've been called to do, so he carries his cross, you got the physical pain, you got the agony, even Jesus on the cross said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me, have you ever felt forsaken. Amen. You ain't walked with God. If you, have you ever felt left alone? You ain't been walking with God. Have you ever had some pain? Because you will experience it as long as you walk with God. And now you got the death. Oh, glory be to God. You got the psychological. You got the physical pain. Then you got the death. Mm-hmm. 
We got to learn how to die. Sometimes we're fighting to live when God is telling you, you got to die. You got to die out to your flesh. Die out to your aspirations. Die out to your dreams. And you got to turn it over unto the Lord. God said, I can't release my power unless you die. I can't release my glory until you die. I can't release the anointing I want to until you let go. Quit fighting. Turn it over to me. The battle isn't yours, but it's the Lord's. Turn it over to God. Give it to Jesus. Give him everything. 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 Give it to God. And so we see Jesus gave up the ghost. He didn't know what was going to happen. The Roman soldier stabbed him in his side just to make sure he was dead. Hey, have that people ever checked on you to see if you were dead? They stabbed you in the side, dragged your body around. They almost broke his bones. But the prophecy said not one bone would be broken in his body. Those bones represented promise. Don't you know that whatever God told you, it will come to pass. Not one bone will be broken. I could be a valley full of dry bones, but God called to the east and he called to the west and he told those dry bones they had to get up. Get up. I know you die, but it's time to come back to life. I know you're dead, but it's time to give them praise I know it may seem over but it's just the beginning somebody shout glory <laughs> glory be to God so Jesus he was buried put in a tomb sat there three days amen and they said one glad morning oh glory be to God it was one glad morning Jesus rolled away they tried to put a boulder up and tell somebody God's going to roll the stone away no matter how they try to seal you up I can depend and trust on the word of God they can put guards outside my grave but when God tell you to get up I don't care where you at I don't care what's in front of you you gotta get up in Jesus I can't turn back I can't turn back I got life before me I got resurrection before me don't turn back it's time to die out to your flesh to your desires don't turn back but rise to the newness of life somebody shout glory glory be to God it's time, it's time to die out. It's time to die out to all this. And it's time to rise. Maya Angelou said, even though they trample me like the dust, yet I rise. They tried to stop Jesus, but he still got up. They tried to deny him, but he still appeared. Oh, and see, the thing about it is he appeared to 500 at once. And he appeared to the people who could see him. See, the thing about it is, is not everybody is willing to acknowledge the fact of who you are. They'll try to keep bringing up old stuff. Like I'm dead, but I'm standing right here before you because I got back up. See, the thing about not turning back is when you die. And the hardest thing to do is die. The hardest thing to do is die. It's to die out to me. It's to die out to what I want. That's the hardest thing to do. But see, once you turn it over to the Lord, when you, you go into his hands, there is no turning back. Now I got to trust in the Lord. And if he brought me this far, I know he can take me further. I said, if he brought you this far, won't he take you further? Uh, I said, if he brought you this far. Oh, come on now. My God is good. See, there's a point in time so when you got to get off the boat and you're walking on water and you got the voices around you, the waves crashing, but I got Jesus before me. See, Peter, he looked at the waves. He got scared and he started sinking. 
Fear causes one to retreat and turn back. If he could have got back to the boat, he would have ran right back to the boat. But he started sinking. See, God, he's saying, look, amen, you just got to keep your eyes on me. And notice he started sinking. Now, the thing about it was, if you know anything about water and you throw rocks in water, they don't sink. They just go straight to the bottom. God is still good in his grace to where even though I'm standing on water, something I shouldn't be doing, he just didn't allow me to drop like a rock. But he started sinking to where he had to get his eyes back on God. See, sometimes trouble will come to get you back on that path. He wants you to die out. So he brings something on you that you can't handle. See, the thing about it is, are you going to sink or are you going to swim? Just like the prophet, he knew the word of God. God led him to do what he did. But the thing about it was, is that lion, he allowed him to slay him. He didn't die out fully. He allowed terms like prophet and angel to trump what he knew about God. He was bewitched. He was fooled. The good thing that he had, he threw it to the side and he gave it unto thieves. He was a man of God. He had God's word. He knew it. But he allowed somebody to fool him. Fall prey to the enemy. And now he, he's, he's sitting by the sign. He's sitting as a sign. He wouldn't be buried with his fathers. See, the thing about it is, is we don't want to be a, an example of what not to do. You want to be an example of what to do. See, the thing about it is God lets us know when it's him. See, there are things that men do, but there are some things only God can do. He had the lion and the donkey just sitting there. Like, look. And when people walked by, they thought it was strange, and they inquired of it. And they had that old prophet, who probably was a prophet of Baal. But God used him to reveal the fact of what you shouldn't listen to. Now, Jeroboam, he had instituted idolatrous worship throughout all of Israel or the northern kingdom. <clears throat> that prophet was probably a false prophet. But God used him to test his young prophet. Will you listen to me? Will you lean on my word? Will you turn back? See, sometimes... There are people who just use things as excuses. But God is saying, don't you allow the situations that are before you to cause you to turn back. Don't let COVID-19 turn you back. Don't you allow the political rallies, the marches to turn you back because you know the answer. You know the truth. We got to go off of what the word of God tells us to. We know about justice and unrighteousness. And we know when you got corrupt man running things, you're going to get corrupt results. I don't care if they wear kente cloths, take a knee, all that. What bigger devil do I vote for? Right? That's why we got to keep our eyes on God. He, he told you don't turn back. He said you got to go another way. See, I don't care whatever the situation is and whatever the enemy tries to box you in with, there's always another way. There's always a different choice. The enemy will try to make it seem as if the thing that is before you is the only option and you got to do it. How many times have you been rushed and forced into a decision that you regret it later on? That's not your only choice. Just like the prophet, he said, I want you to go another way. And I don't care who tell you to go the other way, you go another way. I don't care what everybody else is saying, you go another way. 
and you stand and trust on my word. Even though I know the, the, the path hasn't been uh, blazed yet. I know nobody shoveled that walkway. But you're going to create the footprints for others to follow. If you just go another way. You know, you know where this road leads. So don't turn back. Stand on the word of God. And God has brought us up to this point. And I'm wondering today. Is there anybody who wants to be saved? God has brought you to this point. You have a choice and a decision. And he's sailing, he's telling somebody, don't turn back, but move forward. If you're listening to me online, don't turn back. Move forward. You can get baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. He'll give you a new tongue. And then he says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. He'll transform your mind. See, that's the process of metamorphosis or transformation. It's like the butterfly, the caterpillar. It's a caterpillar. All it does is eat, 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 eat some more. And then it grows into a cocoon. It's by itself. It almost seems as if life has changed. And now what seemed as a good life of just eating has turned into a fight to get out of. You know, that's sin. We just go around walking, chilling. It is what it is. But then God is saying, now you got to come out. And so just like the caterpillar, it's transforming. How it gets the strength to fly and use its wings is, is, is it's busting out of the cocoon. It's time to bust out of your situations. It's time to bust out of those troubles. And God is saying it's time to fly. Amen. If I had a, a message about the rapture, it would be the time of flight. The time of flight. It's time to fly. It's time to get ready. But whatever you do, don't turn back. You can come now. I won't bear your patience. You know what you need to do. We all know what we need to do. So serve this as a, as a warning and an example. If you thought about chucking the deuces, throwing in the towel, don't turn back now. You're too close. You're too close to the end. Amen. Thank God for everyone. Amen. Amen. Being here with us. <clears throat> Amen.